You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening! KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of dollarshaveclub.com. What is dollarshaveclub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. Celebrity designer Jeff Lewis is back with Hollywood House Lift. I'm excited to be working with new clients. I'm not getting rid of that. I hope I never see you both again. (laughs) An all new season. Those have to go. That has to go. From oh, wow. It's been an actual nightmare. To oh, wow. This is such an upgrade. With celebrities like Josh Duhamel, Christina Ricci, and Gina Rodriguez. Dazzle me, Jeff. It looks like Chuck E. Cheese. (laughs) Stream an all new season of Hollywood House Lift with Jeff Lewis. Now streaming on Freebie. I am Conor McGregor, multiple weight MMA champion. I'm a fighter and I've been through many battles in the octagon. Many consider my fights in the octagon heroic, but the real life heroes are those men and women who fight to protect us every day. The real life fighters, the real life heroes, are the firefighters and police officers. These first responders are true heroes because these brave men and women put themselves in the line of danger every single day protecting us all. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation ensures that first responders from fire, EMS and police departments who are killed in the line of duty with young children have a home without the burden of a mortgage. They are my heroes. They need our help today. I'd like to ask you to join me in donating $11 a month to support their efforts. Your $11 a month honours and supports our first responders. Please call now at 1-844-BRAVEST or visit tunneltotowers.org. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised.
Fubar, One Nation Under Foo. I am your host, the superb, the funky, the supple, the Foo. And we are coming to you live on this stunning Wednesday night from Fubar Studios, right here on KLRN Radio. And with me, as always, is the only Amish guy who wants Parallel Park to train, Ordy Packard. Ordy, how are you? You know, I think it's the alliteration at the start of the show I miss the most. Is it? Did it make you want to cry a little bit? It did. It did. I I, I felt a little. I I don't want to say tear. Misty, maybe. Misty. Did I don't you know. feel misty? Yeah. There's misty. a lot. Of, there's a lot that goes into that. I'm picking adjectives that all kind of sound the same and have the sound. So you know, I I do put some effort in that. So I'm glad it made you cry. It did. It did. Good. good. And I'm usually, so glad. you know, in the good way, not the way we usually do around Thanksgiving. Oh, wine, wine, wine. How are you? How are you? What's going on with food? What's new with food? I asked you first. <laughs> oh, well, I'm great. I'm good. Mm, Making ball you? soup here. It's, it's, <sighs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, yep. it's goddamn. Still making but, uh, ball soup, huh? Well, look, I'm glad some things haven't changed. After all these years. After all these years. Yeah, well, you know, making... when you live in the desert. You're still making ball soup. God bless you. Well, that's good. Anything else going well? Yeah, I have my, excuse me, <coughs> allergies. Uh, I have my first official viral tweet. Oh, no kidding. What did you, what was it? That was wasn't it? actually a meme or oh, you know, okay. anything. Yeah, Nothing no, this was, or... no, no, it was my little rant about how everybody gets Civil War 2.0 wrong. Oh. And how it's actually going to be like the Troubles. No. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, yeah, That's... I'm, a, yeah, I'm, a, yeah. <laughs> That's you know, awesome. so, you know, really light, uplifting things. That's really, it sounds like a very uplifting, I'm sure you motivated a lot of people. That's awesome. No, really good I'm, for you. Yeah, no, I really did. No, it's, I mean, you know, I'm over almost three quarters of a million in views and 25,000. I know that's like every tweet for you, but for me, you know, that's. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I think that's great. Good for you. didn't you. have to. I felt your judgment. <laughs> you could. I was mocking you internally. Oh, how, how many did you yeah. get? Ooh, no, I'm kidding. I think that's, yeah. you know, I know you have a lot of traffic and it's a, usually around banging moms behind the Circle K. So I'm really glad that it was yeah. a substantial tweet that did that. That's awesome. I think that's yeah, great. I mean, I you I, know, I'm, I'm, I'm I think still, I missed it. What? I may have yeah. missed it. You well, may you have know. to send it to me. Well, I did put it in a DM that we share, but I know you don't actually read those. I don't so. really read those. I, I mean, you think I mean the chat. Guys, I'm as mean to people in our DM groups as I am to chat. I just don't pay attention. Yeah. I'm not good at it. It's my own she, fault. I'm she busy. really doesn't. I have a lot yeah, going on. It's your on. superpower. It is. My superpower is being a bitch. And it happens very naturally. Well, no, it's it's being ambivalent. <laughs> you know, let's, let's be kind. That's a big yeah. word. I like <laughs> bitch just rolls off the tongue. Let's just go with bitch. Okay. I think that works a lot better. All right. But, but, no, but you know, that's great. Who, who am I to tell you how you identify? Exactly. Don't be that guy, right? Don't mansplain. I appreciate yeah. that. Especially, you know, you know, in Pride yeah. Month and all that. It's great. <laughs> yeah. How about you? What's going on with you? Eh, I don't know. My kid just graduated high school. My kid's going to college in two months. She's leaving home. My son just got his driver's license. I'm feeling very old and like, empty nesting. And I think my dogs are really sick of me. Because I'm like, oh, you're my babies now. And they're like, fuck off, crazy woman. <laughs> I was like, come here, come lay with mommy. Yeah. Uh, no, it's great. Actually, it's really been you fun. Know, before it was occasional attention. Now it's undivided <laughs> attention. And they just, they, you know. Now it's like, why don't you let me put this little bonnet on you? And you're like, get fucked, woman. Yeah. Uh, but no, you know, it's, right? it's actually great. It's a lot of fun. You know, there's this part of you that's like, oh, my baby. But then it's like, I'm so proud of her. And she's going to college and she's such a badass, you know. So it's been awesome. And then my son just got his driver's license. So that's terrifying. So, you know, everything is good as far as that all goes. And it's good to be back and making fun of you for an hour. So this worked out well. I'm good. Well, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And it's kind of how it works, isn't it? Yes, that's how it stays the same. Like our intro. I mean, I was like, oh, my God, it's us. Isn't that fun? That's fine. Yeah. No, but yeah, it's good. Good to be back. Good to see people in the chat and be mean to them. And they still suck. So that nothing, you know, like you said, nothing changes. Hey, chat lives matter, Sam. Chat yeah, what lives we got matter. To, ooh, we got a good turnout tonight. Yeah. Chat lives They do matter. matter. Uh, no, they, they really don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get. I'm I gonna, do have a list. I'm, I'm going to give you the same spiel you give me every time I write for Twitchy. You got to remember our readers matter, I, Nick. No, no, that's different. Our readers do matter. <laughs> 
kidding. I love chat. Chat is awesome. No, uh, I did try to see it organized because I realized how unorganized I was like before the show took a hiatus. I was trying to be more organized this time. So I did actually put a list I want to stick to together. So I yes. don't go off on okay. a tangent. So, and I think I sent you most of it, but then I added That's my of job it. to take us off on tangents. Oh, that's right. And to make fart noises. No, I, I put together yeah. a little list. But I have one thing that has nothing to do with everything else on my list. So I thought I'd start with that. Okay, throw in curveballs. Really weird. All right. Okay, did you hear about the Mother God documentary? It's called Love Has Won. I've heard, I've heard of it. Crazy okay. cult chick. Yes, who thought she was God and Jesus, and then she said she was like Pele in Hawaii. And uh, well, my husband has decided that we're going to watch a bunch of really creepy, bizarre, fucked up documentaries at night, you know, so that I have a little extra anxiety. Um, and so we've been watching these terrible documentaries. And he found this one. And, you know, and the other ones we've been watching, it's like all these Asian women are getting put in cults or killed and it's terrible or they're having their parents killed. So this one was very different from the others. Um, and I was shocked by it. And I think I'm still shocked that people join cults. And I know I shouldn't be because I witnessed so much craziness like on social media. You know, you see people who you know, like Biden supporters or even some Trump supporters, you get like these people who are just fanatical. But these people were like fanatical, fanatical, and they believe they still believe she was like she died. You watch this woman waste away, and these people hang out with a dead body, and they watch you watch they them. mummified her. Yes, they mummy and they wrap her in Christmas lights. I'm like, this is some fucking crazy shit. And it starts out, and she's all like, she's close to my age, and she's this little chubby teenage girl, and she wants to fit in. I'm like, oh, I get it. I feel how she feels. It was the '90s. It was tough. And then she like deserts her kids and runs off because she meets this old hippie guy who decides that she's God too. And then she becomes Jesus. And oh my, it just was bizarre. It's one of those documentaries that I watched and I still feel like creeped out that I watched it mainly because they cart this woman's dead body across five States in the back of a car. And the cops pull them over at one point and they're like, Oh, she's just sleeping. And the cop believes them. This was so crazy. And then maybe I'm the only one who was like, this is some crazy. This was crazy. And it has stuck with me so much that I had to talk about it. My poor husband, he's like, I can't talk about this anymore. It's so creepy. It bothered us both, which is why it was fun to watch it together, I suppose. Um, but yeah, you, if you haven't seen it yet, you probably should watch Love Has Won so you can be as disturbed as I was by it. She turns yes, because blue. we all need more damage to our psyche. She turns Yeah, that's blue. right. Okay, so she was like, so on top of like, apparently she was like anorexic and an alcoholic, but also was like super addicted to colloidal silver. Yes, yeah, so they and, were making their own, and she turned blue. Yeah, which I is actually you know that's a side effect of people who like take way too much of it. Yes, and, you know it's like what, what's wrong with your face? She was like shiny and blue. It was the weirdest, and she like becomes all skinny and weird. And she's always getting high, and then she like decides that all these if she has sex with this one guy and he's father father god and then she gets oh but you know the galactics who are people like robin williams and donald trump was somehow connected to her she said he was her father and don't get me started the people her her galactics were leading her and that was robin williams and george michael and gene wilder and all these dead people who are famous are guiding her and so she'll be having sex with this one guy and then she meets another guy and she's like oh you're the new father god and then she had two father gods at the same time this was crazy stuff so if you need a break it was actually one of the ex-father gods who found out that they had her mummified remains and told the police like okay this is way beyond okay so no that's that's uh he was the original father god well no that was the hippie in colorado no this was he became the archangel michael and he had all the money this is nuts. So if you get tired of politics and want something that will make you equally uncomfortable, I suggest you watch Love Is One because it was really screwed up. Screwed up enough for me to want to talk about it on my show back. That tells you a lot. I, she turns blue. I, I, blue. I just binge Warehouse 13. I haven't watched that. Yes. Blue. You, oh, you could love it. I probably You really would. would. It's, you know, it's just a fun little show. It's not too heavy. I mean, I don't believe wait, you. No, you'd hate it because, yeah. <laughs> Is this no, going to be another it. one of those nerd things that I didn't know about, like the Indiana Jones thing, and I'm going to get taunted about this for like no. years? Okay. Uh, possibly. Because some of us well, are maybe. uber nerds, and so we miss out on it. So, 
I actually am just now watching Wednesday on Netflix, and I was blown away by how much I enjoyed it. I'm like, okay, my brain is officially gone because I enjoyed Wait, it, is it. Is it back on Netflix? Because I because I missed it, and then it's like I saw it on Prime for like sixty bucks. I'm like, yeah, no. So no, it yeah, it was on, on Netflix? Netflix. Yeah, I've watched it today. Like I okay. sat and after right. I got done working on my day off when I shouldn't have been working, I decided to binge watch Wednesday for the first time, and I was like, "Oh, this is oddly oh, yeah. entertaining." And then I'm like, "Oh my god, what's happened to my brain?" So they, they had me from like the Ryan. first. They had me from like the first thirty seconds because, yeah, the pool scene was enough for me. I was hooked from that moment on. Just saying. <laughs> so, if you need a break. From the politics, I did for a minute, so there's that. But I suppose we should talk about the stuff people think I'm going to talk about, right? All right, let me pull my list. Uh, up. You know, yeah, yeah, you know. Why well, is she babbling about some crazy okay. bitch who went blue in Colorado? <laughs> it just blew my mind. It was crazy. Well, I mean, it is Pride Month. I'm sure there's mm. a lot of feeding friends that we can talk about with that. You did a great, great segue. I actually That's have a actually what I. Mean. It wasn't right, well, I thought you were being like creative. You should take credit and go look at me. I did this. I had a segue. But yeah. it is it's Pride Month yeah. and. What's fascinating to me is, you know, every time, every June is my birthday. It should be Foo Month, but whatever. Um, it's Pride Month, and so everyone's changing their logos well, there was to that rainbows. Time <clears throat> They're changing their logos to rainbows and making things pretty and sparkly, you know, because that's the whole gay thing. Uh, but they're actually, I'm not seeing quite as much as I usually see. And uh, maybe that's just me. Yeah, it seems kind of muted. I, it is. It's kind of like weird. Um, it, it's not everywhere. It's like they like overplayed it, their hand and they're like back paddling. <laughs> you think? Only a little bit. Uh, they're actually, usually all the NFL teams are, you know, like, oh, look, you know, we're the Raiders and we like the gays or whatever. Uh, there's actually 11 NFL teams who are not taking part this year. And one of them is the Denver Broncos. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was very excited to see that they weren't playing that game. Did you also see that the the pro-Palestinian protesters got in a fight with the pride parade and they were trying to block the parade from going oh, let them fight <laughs> let them fight let them fight that was really entertaining. <laughs> that was that was that was that was good that was you know uh well there we was just, one guy he was wearing because like it's a, exactly what it would be like if they went to palestine but exactly. fortunately for the gays there's no building larger than one story left in gaza and so there's no stones being thrown. Um, there was a guy though right. in the in the in the front. I couldn't tell if he was pro Palestine or Pride because he had like a black leather hat on and a black vest. But he was like standing in front and pushing back on the Pride. It was very confusing. I get kind of my identity politics and all that crap confused sometimes. Still, I think because I was like, hmm, is he Pride or is he Palestine? This is confusing. Either way, he's an idiot. But it was fun. He's to a watch leather him. sub, but he's into <laughs> Palestine. <laughs> That's kind of like, don't they? Or isn't that kind of a pride thing that they wear the leather, not the Palestinians? But you know, what do I know? I, I'm not protesting. Yeah. But yeah, I did. I noticed it's a little more muted, and it's like not everywhere. And I mean, it's kind of. I don't. It's funny, and I, I think it's just to your point. I think they decided they overplayed their hand. I know that Target yeah, removed all it's... their crap, and all their like, all their front tuck friendly bathing suits and all that crap is gone too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's, it just seems like, I mean, you know, so many of these companies have been called out, especially the ones that do business in the Middle East, like, you know, Mercedes. Yeah. When, you know, they did their pride logo, you know, they showed somebody had, somebody had a post where it showed all these corporations with their pride logos and then their same like Saudi Arabia account yeah. that was just their standard logo. So it's just kind of like, so guys, what's up with this? <laughs> and uh, you, uh, I think Mercedes came out and said, "Well, you know, we appreciate the different cultures and how they respond to Pride Month." And they're like, "Oh, by stoning them, you're scared <laughs> shitless of them because you know they're going to show up and do something scary if you piss them off. That's what it really is about." Yeah, yeah and it just tells you how disingenuous it really all is, and it's not really about what they care about or what they support, or it's about trying to pander to people who don't buy Mercedes anyway. Well, it's oh. funny you mentioned the Vegas Raiders. Is that well, I mean, the Oakland Raiders? I'm never going to never intentionally call them the Vegas Raiders, <laughs> but I'm surprised they weren't on this list because you got the Atlanta Falcons, Cincinnati Bengals, Cleveland Browns. Way to go, Ohio! Um, yeah. In general, uh, Denver, uh, Dallas. That kind of surprises me, considering Dallas, Dallas. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, hey New Orleans now. Saints, and Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, I said it. I'm not sorry. But they are the and Vegas. Uh, Tennessee it's Titans. 
it's Vegas Raiders. Yeah. They got to be car- now. They're sparkly. You know, there's it's Sin City. They yeah. gotta they gotta be where they are. You're right though. It's weird calling them. They gotta be outrageous. Raiders. I don't like calling them Vegas Raiders. I mean, I don't like the Raiders anyway. But I don't like calling them the Vegas Raiders. I think that's. I had the hardest time adjusting to calling them the LA Raiders until they moved back to Oakland, and then it just seemed to roll off the tongue better because just, that's the yeah. last time they were good. Oakland Raiders. That's who they are. And now it's like Vegas Raiders. Who? It makes no sense to me. But that's probably why, because you know they're in Vegas. And they gotta represent, you know. But they I thought that was him the body of Skeletor and have him write the ship. <laughs> that would be awesome. All the black and silver when they threw batteries <laughs> at us. That, that was my favorite. So yeah, you know, I, I think that's interesting to your point that they're not on the list. But I'm not surprised. Yeah. But it was an interesting yeah. list to go through to see that because you know we hear so much, like with baseball. Do you remember last year when they? Brought those like the weird, bizarre pride nuns. Who oh, were, the yeah, what the, were they called? God, they were awful, and they'd show up dressed the, as the sacred mothers of that whatever. Yeah, that shit crazy. Yeah, they were showing up, yeah. at, and like they had a big night where they honored them as some, you know, what was it, some charity or nonprofit? I'm like, okay, that's awesome. So I don't miss any of that, and yeah. I wonder if what happened with all that. Maybe they were like, oopsie, we totally screwed up because people were pissed and they're done. So I don't see anybody well, I think complaining that's what I either. Think people were pissed and they're done. I don't see anybody even I mean, online I, I, who are like, why aren't you doing more gay stuff? I don't even see people who want more gay stuff. You know, I thought for sure we'd, so they, they like the bitch. I thought we'd see it. And I'm not saying that either. So that's been interesting. I think this year. Well, I think the, I, I think the LGP has finally excised the QT and said, we're enough of your, we've had enough of your shit. Mm. Because I, I mean, most of the pushback I see, most of the pushback I see against trans yeah. And the other, the rest of the alphabet is actually coming from gays and lesbians. Lesbians. They, they're sick, you know, yeah. because you, just like, and women, because the three oh, most yeah. marginalized group by the trans movement are, you know what? No, fuck off. You know, we tried to entertain you, but you just went, yeah, well, I'm they, not using they, the R word around you, but. Thank you for respecting. I know it is such a stupid thing. It's like, I swear, like a sailor and I say a lot it's of fucked not. up shit, but I hate that word so much. And it's just ridiculous that I hate a word and I'm probably going to hear about it, but I do. I don't like it. So thank you. For, I appreciate that. Um, but no, it's you so- know, I, I do. I, I do have to thank. I do have to thank Zelda for presenting me with one of my favorite memes. memes lately is that it has the earth with, you know, people who you know, appreciate free speech. And then it has the man holding up the earth, people who never stopped using gay and retarded. <laughs> Uh, of course but no it is it's the lesbians man they are really pissed off because they were being told that they had to like do like dig guys who were women because they were women they're like no we don't like men who dress up as women we like women you know and it's interesting watching because they well how can you be so transphobic you know we're you've been oppressed we've been fighting for you too and they're like no you fucking haven't i was like i just sit back and watch the lesbians eat them alive because they do the lesbians are the angriest ones well i mean the great thing about that is the the last people who were to become turfs were the lesbians Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you and, and it was just like okay so that's fine and everything and i get it and Okay, so now you're invading our spaces. Uh, no. And, no, oh, and no, you want us to have sex? No. No, you want us to like dick. We don't. Well, have you seen, like, they have yeah. all these all these, like, these parades and these protests where they're holding the signs, and they're like, you know, you'll like it if you try it. Like, no, we won't. And there's a reason we're a lesbian. Yeah. But, you know, I'm kind of like, now you know how women in general have felt being told that, you know, we have to let men into our spaces and sports and have our experiences is because, you know, they're mentally ill and mediocre and can't do their own stuff. Now, you know, and now you understand what they're doing to the T, the T and Q is running the LGB and it's time to be done with it. Because if the T and Q are legit, then there is no B because if that's, you know, bi, then that's only two sexes and that can't be. So it's a contradiction. So that might be part of the reason why we're not seeing so much about it. And I didn't intend to babble about this so long, but yeah, you brought up a good point. Well, I mean, you know, to the last point of that too is that I mean, so yeah, you know, everyone's like, "Oh, the trans movement." Well, you, you understand that "trans" is actually a prefix, right? It's mm. it's the front of the word "transsexual," meaning you are transitioning from one sex to the other. To the there other. is no in between state where you have this special, you know, this special privilege. But for some right. reason, the most oppressed of all of the. Uh, you know, actually have the loudest fucking voices and have the most power right. for some reason. 
Well, it's interesting because right before I got on the air, I had this woman barking at me. I think it's a woman. I don't know. She's barking at me because I said men don't have ovaries. And she's like, yes, trans men do. I'm like, no, trans men are women. They're not men. And men don't have ovaries. And then she tried to tell me that some animals that don't, who are women or female, don't have ovaries. I'm like, you know what, lady? If you have to go to that place to tell me that men can ovaries, you're fucked in the head anyway, and I'm done here. It was just ridiculous how determined they are to to pretend that – why would you want ovaries? I don't get – they suck. Ovaries are a pain in the ass. Periods are a pain in the ass. Why do you want to experience these things if you don't have to? It doesn't make you better. It makes you mediocre, and it makes you the patriarchy. They are literally the patriarchy. No, exactly, and that's what's the, you know, that's the funniest thing about it. Is they're the ones screeching about the patriarchy. You are the patriarchy. You are the patriarchy. You are a man coming in and dominating women's spaces. You're a media. Yeah, and again, not, you know, not not to not to go too you know far afield on it, but it was like Bill Maher's rant this weekend of uh about um you know the real apartheid is gender apartheid. And I don't know if you saw that, but he did a fantastic, he was mostly talking about the Middle East and, you know, it's like interesting how, you know, they're all ready to put on the keep, but none of them are putting on the burqa. Yeah, I saw that. I'm sorry, I choked on my strawberry drink. (laughs) It's our laughing drink. You said, is that the new apple juice? (laughs) I knew that was coming. I was trying to get it out of my system. No, it's crystal light. I'm trying to drink more water because I'm getting old. <clears throat> I sucked it back my nose. Oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. You know what? It's 930. We should take a break so I can die quietly. <laughs> okay, die quietly. Oh, fair. So we're going to take a break. But have you tried Element? <clears throat> what? Element Element T. No. Bad water. No. I've been I using didn't... that for hydro. It's good. I like it. <clears throat> we're going to take a break, guys. I'm <laughs> How we'll be defined Just stand your ground Give and take Only works when both sides Really give and take KLRN Radio has advertising rates available We have rates to fit almost any budget Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up. Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate, I know jiu-jitsu, I drive like a gay, so when I'm coming to see you, see you. Celebrity designer Jeff Lewis is back with Hollywood Houselift. I'm excited to be working with new clients. I'm not getting rid of that. I hope I never see you both again. (laughs) An all-new season. Those have to go. That has to go. From, oh, wow. It's been an actual nightmare. To, oh, wow. This is such an upgrade. With celebrities like Josh Duhamel, Christina Ricci, and Gina Rodriguez. Dazzle me, Jeff. It looks like Chuck E. Cheese. (laughs) Stream an all-new season of Hollywood Houselift with Jeff Lewis. Now streaming on Freebie. I am Conor McGregor, multiple weight MMA champion. I'm a fighter and I've been through many battles in the octagon. Many consider my fights in the octagon heroic, but the real life heroes are those men and women who fight to protect us every day. 
The real life fighters, the real life heroes, are the firefighters and police officers. These first responders are true heroes because these brave men and women put themselves in the line of danger every single day protecting us all. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation ensures that first responders from fire, EMS and police departments who are killed in the line of duty with young children have a home without the burden of a mortgage. They are my heroes. They need our help today. I'd like to ask you to join me in donating $11 a month to support their efforts. Your $11 a month honours and supports our first responders. Please call now at 1-844-BRAVEST or visit tunneltotowers.org. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. After me. And we're back. And luckily, I, I stopped choking during the break. And if you were listening to us on one of our feeds, you can hear us during the break and you got to hear all about my dogs. But anyway, we're back. Thank you for staying with us. And thank you for waiting while I choked on my crystal light. You were here with Fubar on our first show back in a year. So, of course, I had to, to choke during the show because otherwise it wouldn't be us. Um, so that was fun, huh? How was the show? I choked. I choked. It's going to be the choke forever now. I choked. Yeah, what are you gonna do? What happens? Okay, I, I, I just gotta, I gotta let it be known for Fubar. I will be wearing the Circle K. Every Fubar, I will be wearing the Circle K hair hat that uh, Angie got me, oh, and well, it looks fantastic with the Moonlight Buddy Ranch shirt that Dennis Hoff gave me. You're getting all kinds of swag so, from people. Look at you. You know what? I don't we, get swag. Well, you know what this, we, this was this was before Dennis Hoff died. Hey, so this was years ago, but so, it looks fantastic. So, 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 so I so, so I have an idea. I need a shot of you wearing that shirt and that hat, and I'll put the smiley face thing over it like Mickey does, and then we'll put a picture of Sam next to you two on one of your live, and that way everybody can see what you see. That that way they can see you okay. rocking it. We'll we'll, we'll, make yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. I'll I'll get some I'll get some good background. I'll hold my dogs. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, but no, I actually have a question for you now that we're back and I'm done choking. Do you think Trump's okay. going? To, do you think Trump's going to jail? Probably not. Hmm. You think they want to? Put no, him in jail? It, it, and I'll tell I'll tell you why. Because if if you get convicted of 34 consecutive counts, you immediately get a retrial. Look up Donald Trump Rule 34. I'm serious. We don't do it because rule 30, for those of you who aren't, we rule 34 means that anything can be sexualized and you can find it on the internet. Exactly. Don't look it up. So you don't do that. If he ever, yeah, yeah. whatever he says, do the opposite. <laughs> but no, I, do you think he's going to jail? No, I really don't. I, it's going to go to appeal and you know, it's just, it's all I, so fucking tiring. I think their goal is to put him in jail. And I think that. Wait, here's the thing, though. I think if anyone's going to do ahead, it, going. it's going to be it's going to be Merchant who does it because Merchant already proved he doesn't give a shit. If we know he's breaking the rules and breaking the law and doing his own thing, he proved that. And Alvin Bragg would like nothing more than to be the guy who got Trump. And if they put him in jail, I think the shit will hit the fan. And I think they want that because then they can say, "Look how violent and horrible the right is again." Because otherwise, I don't know what they're going to do with Biden because he's just a disaster. Now, I, I could have be wearing well, my tinfoil way too tight because it happens when I read as much of the nonsense that I do. But I, I think I think their goal is to put him in jail. Well, OK, here's the thing, though, is that that if they do, that is going to lead to the absolute hell of unintended consequences. Remember how. Black Twitter lost their fucking minds in support of Trump when they arrested him. If they put him in jail after what everybody except for the media and tele the corporate media and complex knows that that was a kangaroo trial. Well, yeah, so everybody knows. He, he got absolutely railroaded. Black Twitter will come out in force to support him. Well, they already are. If you watch, well, I mean, he's, like 50 Cent was, I guess. With Lo and Bo Lauren Bobert, I just got a picture of them together, and they talked to him about it. 
And he talked about how black people will will resonate with Trump because they got RICO charges. And it was just interesting. Yeah. But I, so I, I just think that they originally they really wanted this whole, well, you know, he's he's a convict. And how can you support a convict? And I think when that backfired and people were like, well, I'm going to vote for the outlaw. I'm going to vote for the convict. Hey, at least this guy is can mentally stand trial, you know. When that failed, then I think they're going to try and find some other way. They're desperate to keep him out of office. And I, but to your point, I don't know if that matters. If they try and arrest him, then I think everything comes to include. My fear is, though, is it gets violent. And if it gets violent, then we're, we're done. Because I think uh, Biden will shut everything down. He'll put us in martial law, and there'll be no election. And I put nothing past these bastards, especially after what we're hearing now with the bird flu. Did you hear this today as well? That they're trying to talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's bird fantastic. Is, is jumping from cows magically to people or something. And so now they are, they're trying to push the idea that there's going to be this new bird flu ap- you know, pandemic thing. And I just, I think after 2020, maybe I'm just a little jumpy because <laughs> I'm just like totally <laughs> paranoid about all of this at this point. And it, I, every time I think I've seen everything that can't possibly surprise me, they surprise me. There is something new yep. that I didn't expect them to do. And there I am. So this is where I am with him going to jail. I think if anyone's going to try it, it's going to be Mershon, especially since now that we know that the other trials aren't going to happen for the election. So he's going to be desperate right. to do whatever he can do to, to keep things from moving forward for Trump. So I, maybe I'm just paranoid, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel good to me. It feels scary, and I don't know. Maybe that's just, again, my tinfoil is on too tight. Never. Not around <laughs> this joy. Not around here. We're all a little crazy. But no, it, it, it kind of feels like... I, I just, you know, we, we left normal fucking 10 years ago. We are, we are way on the other side of the curtain now. We haven't seen normal since 2008, I don't think. so. But this is, this is I mean, you know, it's uncharted territory again, because this has never happened before. And now what? So, And then there was a piece today that came out about the January 6th committee and that you remember the story about the limo driver and somehow Trump. Like, yeah. The, the most implausible crap on the planet. <laughs> he somehow magically hulked out, jumped from the back seat to the front seat to force the limo driver to do something bad. Cause he wanted to go and be part of this whole, you know, protest and the insurrection and he wanted to be in charge. And so he magically hulked out and somehow got into the front seat and Cassidy Huntington told the whole story Now they found out that the limo driver wanted to testify and they didn't allow him to testify. So. Well, they eventually did in November after the election. Yeah. But the four months leading into it when he's all, I want to refute that. And. Yeah. And your buddy Liz Cheney. She deliberately kept that from happening because they wanted him to look like this unhinged crazy person. It, it, it's, it just proves once again that this was all about a narrative. This was not about figuring out what happened. This was about Nancy Pelosi had a narrative, and Nancy Pelosi wanted it put out a certain way, and that's what they did. So I don't put anything past them when I hear about you know he may go to jail. I'm like, well, he may. And then what happens? Yeah. And then, you know, I'm looking at legal Twitter, which is really stupid. Never look at legal Twitter because none of them know shit. Yeah. But what, I'm like, what happens if he goes to jail? Nobody knows. Well, he can still run from jail. Well, what, can he be president from jail? I mean, just like, what happens? Nobody knows. <clears throat> and I'm sure someone knows. They'll be like, oh, question, so yeah. we told you, but you didn't listen. You know, I'll have someone telling me that. But I just, I don't even know. It's like the weirdest thing. And, you know, we have an election coming up, but you don't see any Biden-Harris signs anywhere. So are they so cocky that they think they got it? It's just, it's weird. It, I know it's an election year, but it, I don't, it doesn't feel like an election year. I don't explain it. Well, that's because, I mean, there's not going to be any real debates. There wasn't a real primary. Mm -mm. And uh, I forgot. So, yeah. Right. And I cover it for a living. I'm like, oopsie, there was a primary. (laughs) My bad. You know, but it it was like, it's done. Nothing matters. He's we have our nominees and they're supposed to debate on June 27th. I still think I don't think. Yeah, that's going to be. Do you think it's going to happen? It's. No, I don't know. You know because Biden's going to say he doesn't want to debate a convicted felon, and that'll be the end of that. Yeah, yeah. it's all yeah, it's all pre-baked in. Where I mean, 
yeah, he's going to be, well, why would I have to, you know, why would I have to debate him? You know, he's a criminal and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to debate him. a convict. Well, they're trying that really hard. Convicted criminal, yeah. convicted felon. Um, and it doesn't seem to matter. No one's, nothing's resonating. People aren't like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to vote for him anyway. Don't care. They'll vote in Trump, you know. Um, but if he goes to jail, then what happens? And if they appeal it, we be in jail till they appeal it. I just, I don't know enough about it. So I don't feel like I should talk about it, but I do have lots of questions. And again, I'd have put nothing past them anymore after what they put us through. Nothing past them. I mean, the Fauci stuff this week, when all of that came out, and, you know, we all knew anyway, but when he had to admit nothing was based on science, that he was just kind of winging it. And, you know, these kids were masked, people were masked, people lost jobs, six feet, people couldn't go to funerals. You know, I, I put nothing past them. If this was done to control an election and change the world, I don't I don't even know. But now I'm like, okay, bird flu, and they're going to put him in jail, and I'm going to go join the Mother God cult and be done with all of it. <laughs> So ah! here's the, you, you brought up the bird, you brought up the bird flu, and boy, it's really a good thing that the government didn't blow their wad over a cold and burn all of their <laughs> um, credibility. So yeah. that way, when something actually serious comes around, something Angie cooks up in her patient zero body patient or whatever, zero Angie, th yes. th then. Th th you know, so now everybody's going to be like, "No, fuck that," and millions will actually die. That's and it won't fear. be a cold this time. It will be like SARS Bola or something. <laughs> SARS Bola. <laughs> It'll be RSV Ebola. Oh my God. Yeah, you know, it's because people are done. They're like, oh, you know what? Fuck you. I'm never doing that again. No, we meet at this time. No, fuck yeah. you. And then, you know, it's too bad. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's, it's, it's such good, it's such much fun when the government overplays and gets involved in shit they shouldn't. Don't you just love it? Isn't it and grand? they do it so fucking always. They really do. It's kind of like their thing. And and unfortunately, even when we're in charge, we're still, the government's too big. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to get on the libertarian. Nobody's ever actually in charge. charge. No, I know. It's it's all about the, what is it? I can't remember. It's the unelected, it's the unelected <laughs> fourth branch of, yeah. no, it's just the unelected fourth branch of the bureaucracy that runs everything. That's right. It's, it's them. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever that is. So I get yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, them, them. Those you people. know who they is? It's not some sh it's not some star chamber shadow government. It's some mid level pencil pusher in the fucking DOE. That's who the they is. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's totally. Yeah, I agree. I got you. <laughs> Sorry. No, oh, I derailed. Well, the next it. juxtaposition. Oh yeah, there bureaucrats. Bureaucrats suck. Here's why. <laughs> Oh my God, that reminds me. I'm sorry. I hate to keep talking about this stupid documentary, but they said that there were there was like starships in the sky and they were hiding behind clouds. So there were aliens involved too. Yeah, you, we, okay, for your show, for we your saw show, that with Heaven's Gate. All good doomsday cults need an alien <laughs> contingent. Well, the aliens were hiding in clouds, and they were going to come take Why her. Wouldn't they? I don't know, but anyway, if you're gonna, you should totally talk about this on your other creepy, weird, scary aliens exist show because it was so bizarre robin williams was selling them that's the serious music. journalism sam yeah you know that's serious journalism <laughs> in your show but uh, anyway i'm sorry it's so weird yeah <laughs> okay i have a list that i totally left it behind we okay. did talk about the debate so that was good let's see I guess okay, you guys have see. always really Trump organized jail. We did. no you know what we're on track Kinda. we're actually on track we inadvertently kept to the list because I just have a lot of the same crap in my head. Okay, that's good. Right. See how organized I still Everything's connected. On? Yes, it's connected. <laughs> the Galactics. Okay, uh, the Hunter Biden trial laptop piece. This has been fascinating to watch. Um, the same people who insisted it was Russian disinformation are now having to admit it was real. And we all knew it was real. Um, it was interesting watching Jill Biden have to leave the courtroom because she couldn't deal with what was on the laptop. Yeah. Uh, we knew that was going to happen. Why well, because it, it was his grandniece. But, oh, God, it's well, so I mean, that shouldn't make any difference after Ashley Biden's diary. So, Oh, it's so bad. You know, the stuff about um, his, it was Bo's widow and how he was having sex with her and then he got her hooked on crack. I mean, just the stuff coming out right now is, I don't know what they're trying to, if they're trying to make him look worse than he really is, but that was nuts hearing about that. And then their text messages back and forth. 
about, you know, well, you didn't call me. Oh, I'm just here getting high or whatever. This is, yeah. Yeah. Bad stuff there. You know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I mean, granted, you know, drug use wasn't really, you know, the greatest generation's thing, really. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, it that's... kind of was if you watch it. But, you know, it's a Biden's 150-year-old ass, so, you know, they didn't really have cocaine yet. <laughs> they do now, and you can tell watching him. Uh, sorry. Oh yeah, no. Oh, my bad. Oops, did I say that? But no. No, no, no. They, they, and again, if there are debates, that dude is going to be on so much fucking horse fucking stimulants, and he's going to he'll be <laughs> able to run the Preakness. He'll poof, he'll be off in the air. Did you see the Donald Trump? He'll be like Cheech. Or, uh, he'll be like Cheech when did he, he did the space coke. Oh my God, we are so Gen X. No, uh, did you see Trump wanted to take a drug test before they did the debate? I think no, absolutely should. <laughs> you should totally. I thought that was really funny. I'm like, well, let's see what did the system. You know, they've got. Well, I want to see him try and get out of it because he didn't take the cognitive test before the last debate. Well, and they have all the these last, rules. The last election, where you know, Bi- Biden, he can't interrupt Biden when Biden's talking. He can't ask questions when Biden's talking. Um, they're going to take breaks, which they never have done before. CNN has said they're going to take commercial breaks. And, you know, everyone, of course, thinks it's because Biden needs a break. Um, it's just funny. I'm like, you should push for that, man. Of course, Trump has said, we'll do whatever you want us to do because I want this debate. Because he knows what if he debates him, it's just going to be a shit show. It's going to be probably the most entertaining thing we've seen this year. Um, but, yeah, that was interesting. But, the yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I See, if, if, I, if, I was tr- if I was Trump, whether it was real or not, when they came back from commercial break, he'd say, I just want to know what they were injecting Biden with during the commercial break. <laughs> Why was it blue? <laughs> create that yeah, create that level of doubt. Yeah. Because the more they deny, the more everybody will believe it. It's true. It's I'm true. sorry. I'm not I I mean, I'm not a big enough fan to give him that kind of political advice, but if you're listening, <laughs> you know. You never know. It wouldn't hurt. You know, we used to at Twitchy, we knew someone from the White House was reading us. We didn't know who, but we knew there were readers in the White House. And so we like to think that Trump was reading us. Now, he did share some stories of ours, too, and so did his son. Junior shared them. So every time we saw a reader from the White House, we're like, yeah, he's reading us. Woohoo! So, you know. And there was a joke at one point that he borrowed a nickname that I gave to Dick Durbin in a piece that we thought maybe he had borrowed that. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's possible. He could be listening tonight. He to- he's one of your biggest fans. He told me. Huge, huge fan uh, of yours. Yeah, huge. You know, we actually did used to have a president listen to the show, though. Did we? Yeah. The what? only real president we've had in the oh. 21st century, John McAfee. He's, yeah, there you go. That was crazy. Hey, Sam, he'd love to come on the show and talk to you guys. Awesome. We'd love to have John on the show. Let me know when he's available. Oh, he's dead. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, fucks the whale and then gets then dies in jail. <laughs> oh, he's in jail. Hi, Sam. We'd love to come on your show. We think it's really fun, and you guys are hilarious, and we'd love to come on the show. John has some things going on, though, and we're going to have to get back with you, but we totally want to do this. That's right. He had sex with a whale, then he went to jail, and he died. <laughs> like, Oops. Okay. Well, I guess you can't come on the show. And, and for those of you not familiar with the history of the show, that's really what happened. Oh, I'm not making that shit up. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not making it up. I mean, we talk a lot of stupid shit. We we say some funny stuff, but this was real. This was his yeah. wife and his wife and I talked multiple times about the show. He thought it was funny. He thought to come on and talk some shit. He thought it'd be I awesome. was hard for three weeks at the thought of him coming on. <laughs> I just I... I'm like, yeah, his wife saw totally into it. But we have some things going on, and we'll call you in a couple of weeks, and we'll get it set. We definitely want to come on. We want to do it live. We're like, fuck yeah. And then he has sex with a whale, goes to jail, and dies. It's like, hmm. Wow. Guess it's not happening now. I mean, how, how many people I, can say that about their shows? You I, know? I do have to interject one thing. How does the wife feel knowing that dude banged a whale and then went to jail? I'm just saying. No, I couldn't tell you. I haven't talked to her since. Yeah. But, you know, I bet those fancy Fox News shows can't say that he was going to come on the show and then he had sex with a whale, went to jail, and right. died. So there, take that. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. You know whose <laughs> show he wasn't going to go on? Tucker's. That's right. Take that. Take that. Bow tie fucker. <laughs> Bow tie fucker. <laughs> <laughs> wearing fucking. Son of a bitch. No. You know, it was this, <laughs> this some crazy stuff that, yeah, this show has been through. You went around when we buried the Democrats and they called and all pissed off. That was fun, too. So, yeah, but that was the only time I've ever had a guy die before he was supposed to come on the show. So that was a thanks for bringing that up. 
We did almost that. That was you know, it, that's actually you know, that was actually one of the uh, high points of my podcasting career was actually getting able to interview John McAfee. <laughs> I had so many questions. We would have had to have gone over by hours. You could have left, and Rick and I could have handled whatever. But <laughs> holy shit, dead. I I had so much on the plate for him. <laughs> Oh my god! I yeah, I'd have gone to bed. I, you guys have fun, whatever. It's ten o'clock. I turn into a pumpkin. I just really wanted to know what happened in Belize. <laughs> but you know, he did say too. He said, "If I if I die in jail, I didn't kill myself." So we're like, mm, probably not. I don't think he's dead. He's probably hanging I think out with whales. Death. It's possible. I don't know. No, yeah, he's just call? out there floating. Around. Yeah. Hey, we want to come on. <laughs> Now, now that, that all this whole Biden Trump thing is over with, and we can have a serious presidency again, John wants to get back in the race. Fuck yeah! <laughs> oh that's in my head cannon now. Oh, that's really God. that's the world I live in. Uh, yeah, that's great. I'm so glad you live in that world. I hadn't even thought yeah. about that world, and you know, since he died. Uh, but that's funny. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that was great. I have these other two things, you know, the EO and the Biden interview at yeah. time. But the only thing I want to say about the, I don't know, if you guys get a chance, you should try and read the transcript of the interview that Time Magazine did with uh, Joe Biden. Because it is a hot mess. It's crazy. And it's, um, you know, there's a reason they're not releasing the her tapes because, you know, and they, they totally tweak the transcripts because the guy is just gone. Um, not only did he get Putin confused with Trump and other people, and he said some weird stuff about China. He challenged the journalist to a fist fight during the interview, apparently, uh, you know, he was, he was being asked about his age, you know, do you think you're too old? And he's like, no, I'll take you on right now. I'm like, Oh my God, this is the president. So if you get a chance, you should get out there and find that. Marcus the Queenberry rules. You, you know. <laughs> come on, Jack. I, I, you know, I was, I was trying to come up with a really good twenties era insult, but they all just came trying to come flooding out of my mouth at once. And I just, eh. Bleh. come on, Jack, come on, you <laughs> lying pony face soldier. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but yeah apparently he decided he was gonna get in a fist fight with uh, joe biden so you know the, the, he wins the fight that's but you know i'm not surprised he always gets when he gets confused he gets angry you know there was like the other day at the presser when he does the um it was what was it the executive order and he's like yeah we're finally gonna shut the border yay and they're like but you know this doesn't do shit he's like yeah, anyway i'm not taking any questions bye and he's leaving and the journal's like hey do you think Net netanyahu is using this for for political gain and he kind of stops, and he looks confused, and I thought, oh, shit. And he says, he's got a lot of stuff to deal with. And he walks out of the room, and he looks at all these Democrats sitting behind him. They just <laughs> done. They didn't know what to say, because, you know, it's like, well, you're not supposed to be, a, you're supposed to be all pissed off at Netanyahu, because, you know, the Palestinian stuff, but you just said he's dealing with a lot of stuff, so you're kind of being nice. And, yeah, the guy's a hot mess. I, I don't know how, I mean. I just. I, and I can't, I hate to say this, but. In a regular world, in a in a normal time, this would not be the – we would destroy this guy with anybody. But we have – Well, remember this- how they hit FDR being in a wheelchair yeah. for, like, most of his third term. Yeah, but here they just parade his fucking <laughs> dementia like it's a – Something you know. I just saw. Oh, it's not he, just a stutter. That's fucking sundowning. No, that, that, oh, Joe, that's just Joe. Oh, he crapped his pants again. That's oh, just old Joe. racist Joe. Oh my God, it is unbelievable. And then anybody like uh, Joe Scarborough said he's brighter and sharper than Kevin McCarthy. I'm like, you are full of shit. Nobody can sit down with this old man and go, you know what you're talking about, old timer. He has lost. He should be hanging out with. Old other old people on the beach, no children. He should be hanging out with old people on the beach and getting old. I mean, this is this is crazy times we're living in. And you know, every time you think it's crazy, it gets crazier. So I hate to say that out loud because it's just going to get crazier. Clearly, it still hasn't gotten weird enough for me. Yeah, but th- that doesn't surprise me with you. It, it's just <laughs> never enough, is it? it it's weird it enough for me. Is. I'm, it's weird. It's past it never weird. Is. I'm done with weird. I would just like some normal and let's argue policy and two good candidates that everyone can either likes or doesn't like and let's do this normally, but there's no such thing anymore. So that is what no, it is. We, no. No. No, they shot a fucking gorilla and it all went south. I'm t- it's true. That's what happened. They shot the gorilla and everything yeah. went to shit. Way to go, people. Harambe was holding it all together. <laughs> 
in his line. And McAfee was part of because that. Because he yeah. had no he had no hair. <laughs> <laughs> the line died with him. That was it. That was the end of normal. Now we're in the after yeah. the AH after Harambe. That's what we're in now. Yeah. yeah. So we tell and people the before how this, times. Yes, yeah, so before Harambe. Now we're the after. And <laughs> you know, Robin Williams contacted me from the dead. Oh my god. Should we tell people how this show's gonna work now? Because you know, they're probably thinking, what the hell? Um so anyway, yeah. before we go off we have like well. two minutes. Uh we're gonna be on every other week at nine o'clock here on Kaylor Run Radio. Um we'll be live for that hour. Just so you guys know, though, of course, you go, oh, there's Sam. Um, I'm going to be here in two weeks. I'll be live. But then I'm going to be gone for almost a month because of my father-in-law's memorial and funeral. And then I have my kid's birthday. So, um, But we didn't want to wait until July to start doing this again because I know how much Amish missed talking to me for an hour every week. So uh, we're going to be every other week. And then once those two um, – once we're into mid-July, I'll be back every other week, and we'll see how things go from there. But just so you know, that's the schedule. It's exciting to be back. I only choked once. I think that's pretty good, right? Twice, maybe. Anyway, literally, not figuratively. Literally, uh, actually, yeah, was, yeah. yeah, literally, like water yeah, not metaphorically. Windows. No, it was like a real deal. That's what we are here, though. We're the real deal. So I guess you should probably yeah. tell people where you know we we, we don't just choke metaphorically. We, you know, we 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 will go down for you. We are dedicated. We will joke for real. Giggity. Um, okay, so do you want to tell people where you are? I don't even know where the hell giggity, you giggity. are anymore. Giggity goo. Stick around. Uh, yeah, you can find me as uh, Ordnance Packard on uh, Twitter. Yes, I still call it Twitter. I refuse to call it X, even same, though same here. I do get the, I, I, I do get the Musk bucks. Mm. Um, not many, but, you know, enough to keep hey. me in sushi and moms behind the Circle K. Works for um, you. Yeah, you know, it's... Hey, gotta do what you gotta I'm, do. Just, I'm helping the economy. Uh, you can find me. You can find me uh, every other Wednesday night now with you. Um, mm-hmm. You can find me every Wednesday with Rick, except for tonight. I got a 4 a.m. start time, so I'm going to bed seconds after the show wraps up. You can find me every other Thursday night. Um, opposite this week, so next week you'd find me with Brad Slager on the Culture Shift, where we take our skeptical eye and turn it on the media complex you can find me alternating saturdays starting this set like this saturday uh with rick where we do juxtaposition our conspiratainment show and you can find me occasionally on rank or steve's rumble uh channel on his manorama show and um how do you keep all that straight think, oh also once a month you can find me on toxic masculinity with rick g and aggie the bar babe do you write this shit down and andrew, I have to write all this down. and andrew don't forget andrew and andrew and andrew yes that's the new addition i'm don't forget Andrew. And Andrew. He makes the best fruitcake. You can't forget Andrew. He's on vacation, so, and he does make fantastic fucking dude, fruitcake. Dude, that's you, not it's freaking awesome. Dude, that, that was that, dude. that was grub. Yeah, dude. That, uh, yeah, that you know, it, it, it dispelled my belief that there is only one fruitcake in the entire existence of mankind that has been passed around to everybody. <laughs> and that is his fruitcake. Should be his. Grub. How about you, Samantha? Where can people find you? Samantha, uh, you can find me here again <laughs> every other weekend. <laughs> Food bar. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Politibunny. That's P O L I T I B U N N Y and on a little website called Twitchy.com. Okay. Phew. We lived through the first show back after a year. Thank you guys for hanging in there with us. We sure enjoyed seeing you back, even though chat sucks. Uh, we'll be back here two weeks from tonight. We'll be here live again talking about God knows what. Maybe my next documentary. Um, but again, thanks for being here live and for supporting us and being as crazy maniacs like we are. Good to see you. We'll see you in two weeks. Until then, keep your sense of humor and stay out of jail. Hell Hydra.